Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shy, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, I'll be going over the final film in the Juan franchise, Juan The Final Curse. After having covered every single film in the Japanese and American timelines, as well as the Netflix TV series, it has finally come to this. The film takes place directly after the events of the beginning of the end as Yui's sister Mai goes looking for her after she goes missing. This sounds pretty similar to the plot of The Grudge 2, which was the very first indication that the final film in this overstuffed franchise wasn't going to be exactly original. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film while the scare score percentage goes up or down based on how the movie's scares are or attempt to be. The very first film in the franchise I saw was Juan the Grudge, which absolutely terrified me as a child and scarred me for a large portion of my life. Is the final curse the terrifying and fitting conclusion to the franchise that I want it to be? Sit back, and relax and join me as we explore Juan the Final Curse and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins with Kyosuke chaining the front gate of the cursed house. He puts up a very convincing do not enter sign and begins laughing hysterically. He believes that getting rid of the house will end the curse. <laughs> Our first chapter is titled Mai, our main character who is the sister of Yui, the main character from the beginning of the end. Mai is plagued by nightmares of Yui who was consumed by the curse in the previous film. She sees a ghostly arm wrapped around her sister and Yui tells her about Toshio. In the previous video, several people said that the spirals that keep appearing are a reference to a horror manga series called Uzumaki by Junji Ito. It looks pretty creepy and there's actually a movie adaptation that came out in 2000 that I'd love to cover sometime in the future. She wakes up in bed next to her boyfriend Sota and tells him about the nightmares. Mai works at a hotel and while delivering room service, we see that she is being stalked by Toshio. She receives a missed call from Yui who then leaves her a voicemail. Her boyfriend Sota works as a guard at a train station and also seems to be affected by the curse. This was a pretty decent scare that had a nice buildup thanks to the creepy atmosphere set by the empty train station. He returns home to a worried Mai who was notified that Yui is now missing. She shows him the creepy voicemail she received where we hear loud breathing accompanied by Kayako's death rattle. The next chapter is titled Reo and begins with a young girl walking to school with her friend Midori. Midori is the younger sister of Yayoi who was consumed by the curse 10 years ago. Reo's mother is Takeo Saeki's older sister and adopts Toshio after the death of Kayako and the disappearance of Takeo. Mai receives a box of Yui's belongings from the school containing her notes and Kayako's diary. She learns about Toshio and sees these spirals drawn in the notebook which leads to a pretty scary jump scare. That one really got me. I'll give this film props because they managed to make Kayako a lot scarier than in the previous film. As expected, Toshio isn't exactly what you'd call a chatterbug. Reo's mother doesn't tell her the truth about what happened to his parents, only that Kayako passed away and that Takeo went out for a pack of cigarettes. While praying to her father's altar, hair begins gathering in the corner behind her. As she walks away, the rice offering turns into mold. The next chapter is titled Enna, a young girl who stays in a hospital next door to Toshio's new house. She becomes curious and uses her phone to zoom into the house. She sees Toshio's spirit walking past, but his physical body is seemingly passed out in a chair. Mai delivers food to a couple celebrating a birthday and the guests suddenly disappear. She sees Yui's spirit who says that Toshio is always following her. Again, the subtitles I had weren't the best, but it's seems like she is trying to warn Mai so she doesn't suffer the same fate. Of course, this isn't the most descriptive warning and only pushes Mai to dive deeper into the curse. Sota comes home and finds Kayako's diary. <laughs> Oh, 
This wasn't done as effectively as the previous film, but it was still genuinely creepy. Sota throws the diary into a bag and throws it out. Mai goes to take a shower and you'll never guess what happens next. They just couldn't help themselves, could they? I understand wanting to recreate an iconic moment, but it's been done so many times and they never bothered to try anything remotely different with this scene. One night, Reo hears Toshio's hum accompanied by Kayako's slow croak. This scene, while not any more original than the last one, relied on a combination of factors like the creepy hum and the death rattle to create a pretty decent scare. The next chapter is titled Madoka. During school, Reo makes plans with her friends for a sleepover at her house. They plan to watch some horror mine and order some pizzas. In their apartment, Sota finds Mai with Kayako's diary and humming the creepy tune. He says that the diary shouldn't be read and disposes of it again. During the sleepover, Reo sees Toshio passed out in his chair as something pulls his toy underneath the bed. While Midori is alone in the room, she hears Toshio humming as a picture frame moves on its own behind her. Toshio suddenly appears and speaks for the first time. The next chapter is titled Toshio and shows us what happened right after Kayako was killed. As Takeo approached Toshio with a knife, the spirit of Toshio Yamaga appeared as a sort of defense mechanism. While we don't directly see what happened to Takeo, it's safe to assume that Toshio made him disappear. I think it's hilarious how hard they tried to make Toshio look creepy when he just looks like a really annoyed teenager. We then see the same shot of an earlier scene revealing that Kayako was there all along. Mai goes to visit the cursed house but sees that it's now just an empty lot. She meets Kyosuke who is responsible for having the house demolished and thinks that the Juan is over. She begs Kyosuke to tell her about what's going on but just like every other scene in the movie, it ends abruptly and moves on to the next. In the hospital, Anna is performing her usual routine of stalking Toshio and immediately regrets it. Toshio's shadow appears behind the hospital curtain and cuts to the next scene. At this at this point, the scene cutting is getting pretty egregious and makes it difficult to invest in any one plotline or scare. Thankfully, the next scene is genuinely terrifying. Sota encounters Kayako at the train station and tells her that the last train has left. So this she starts creepily walking behind him while whispering that she wants children. She looks ghostlier with each step and suddenly disappears. <laughs> This type of scare is where Juwan shines. The setting was very atmospherically creepy and Kayako made me super uncomfortable. This is what the earlier films built their terrifying reputation on and something that the later entries never quite managed to recapture, which is a real shame. This may seem a little confusing, but it appears that Mai and Sota have been cursed without having stepped foot in the house or encountering a cursed individual. One explanation for this may be that they became cursed when they came into contact with Kayako diary. Also, having the house demolished may have allowed the curse to become more powerful and spread. Something similar occurred in the American Grudge films when Karen Davis set fire to the Saeki house. Reo and her friends have a conversation about how weird they think Toshio is. Madoka says they should look him up online, but Midori advises against it. That night, Midori goes to a karaoke lounge on her own. <laughs> She seems to be having a pretty good time until the video becomes creepily distorted. She calls the clerk who says there is nothing wrong with the TV. She goes back into the room and sees her older sister Yayoi sitting on the couch. The lights start to flicker in and out and what happens next was absolutely hilarious to me. Ah! 
they actually had Toshio sound as if he was screaming into a karaoke mic. Needless to say, this wasn't scary at all and actually ruined the scene. Yayoi suddenly appears behind her and begins viciously squeezing her face. The clerk enters the room and sees Midori's dead body with her head smashed into the ceiling. We then see Madoka inside of a restaurant eating some noodles. She calls Reo and sends her an article that reveals what really happened to Toshio. While looking at her phone, Madoka doesn't notice the eyeball in her food and the noodles briefly turning into a clump of hair. For those wondering, she's eating a dish called Ikasumi, squid ink pasta, which is why her noodles are black. Madoka hears a cat meow and sees Mar under the table. She then gets spooked by Toshio and the restaurant suddenly becomes empty. Her skin starts to turn into char as if being burned from inside out. Back in reality, a waiter discovers her dead body. Reo reads the article about Toshio and learns about the terrible things that happened. She goes into Toshio's room and his spirit suddenly appears behind her. She rushes out of the room in fear and takes a tumble down the stairs. Her mother comes to her aid and Kayako suddenly appears. They barricade themselves in the living room, and Ryo confronts her mother for not telling her the truth about Toshio. Toshio's spirit walks behind her, and she realizes that they're going to die. She begins to freak out, and her mom tries slapping some sense into her, which doesn't turn out so well. <laughs> That escalated pretty quickly. Believing Toshio is the root of the curse, her mom goes into the kitchen and grabs a knife. She plans on killing Toshio to end it all, but Kayako appears right behind her and pulls her to her death. A distraught Reo picks up the knife and aims to finish what her mother started. She goes into Toshio's room and finds him sitting on the floor. Kayako begins to bend Reo backwards until she completely snaps her in half. This was one of the cooler Juan kills I've seen in a while. They usually cut away from the deaths or leave it up to the imagination, but I appreciate that they actually showed this one. The next chapter is titled Sota, and we see Mai going to Reo's house. She briefly sees Toshio in the window, but gets no answer at the door. As she walks away, we see Sota was actually following her. He sees Enna peeping through her window and goes to ask her about Toshio. He touches her shoulder and sees a vision of her interaction with him. In this vision, we see Toshio's spirit holding his cat Mar and learn that Enna is terminally ill. It seems like Toshio has a sweet spot for Enna, as she is the only character his spirit has really interacted with and not harmed or killed. Sota enters the house and goes into Toshio's room, where he sees him passed out in the chair. As he tries to wake him up, Toshio suddenly gets up and begins choking him. Sota starts to choke Toshio back and ends up killing him. He rushes back to his apartment, where he sees Kayako's diary in his living room. He grabs the diary and tries burning it on the stove. At the hotel, Mai is lured by an apparition of Sota walking up the stairs. He leads her into an elevator containing the Toshio Boys Choir. At this point, I think the creators of this film have really lost the sense of what is and isn't scary. That night, Sota briefly becomes hypnotized by the diary that he failed to get rid of. He hears knocking at his door but doesn't see anyone when looking through the peephole. The knocking turns extremely aggressive and Kayako begins making her way in through the mail slot. She begins crawling toward him in a pretty creepy scene that's just too little too late for this movie. Mai comes home and finds her boyfriend's dead body, which leads us into the final chapter titled Kayako. Like every other Juan film I can think of, our main protagonist heads into the cursed house to try and end the curse with conviction and no plan whatsoever. I mean, let's be honest here, she's no closer to ending the curse now than she was when she was delivering that birthday cake in the beginning. She enters the house and encounters the spirit of Reo and her mother. They tell her that Toshio is here and Anna shows up from behind them. They begin laughing hysterically and Toshio reveals that he has taken a hold of Anna's body. Mai crawls out of the room in fear and begins to hear Kayako's death rattle upstairs. In a scene that's only different because of the actresses involved, Kayako crawls down the stairs in yet another rendition of the Juan stair scene. I'll give credit where it's due, Kayako still manages to look menacing and scary in the scene. Kayako suddenly turns 
turns into Yui and eerily says that the Juon will never end. Yui becomes absorbed by long black hair and turns back into Kayako. In the film's final scene, we see Toshio sitting on a table, watching as Kayako crawls on top of Mai. Mai desperately calls out for help as she is finally consumed by the curse, as the movie, and hopefully the entire franchise, comes to an end. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Juon The Final Curse. Although I don't really know how final it is, as the film literally ended the same way as Juon The Grudge, and look where that got us. As a huge fan of Juon, it's pretty disappointing that this was supposed to be the quote unquote final film. There was literally zero resolution, and it was pretty much a copy and paste of everything we've already seen. Yes, there were a couple of good scares spread throughout, but there were so many moments that simply made me laugh giving Juon the final curse a not-so-good scare score of 35%. <laughs> The scariest scene in the film is when Kayako was walking behind Sato in the train station. The atmosphere was immensely creepy, and Kayako is one of the few things they managed to get right in this reboot. Just like I vowed to do nearly three months ago, I have covered every single Juon slash grudge related film and TV show. That is, until they release a second season of Juon Origins, or the franchise gets picked up for another reboot slash remake. It definitely had its ups and downs, but I had an absolute absolute blast covering this franchise. It's a bittersweet feeling to be finished, but I'm glad we're finally moving on. I want to thank each and every one of you that stuck it out with me throughout this entire series, and I truly appreciate the support. But, as always, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around. Also, the version of the film I watched didn't have the most accurate subtitles, but it was all I could find.